going to carry around is self-condemnation. Mm -hmm. Self-condemnation -condemn is the state of constant awareness of our failure. It's the mental torments of remembering an act or a moment of sin. And you can't move forward unless it is released. There's the self-condemnation in our lives. But Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now, what? No condemnation, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death, this condemnation. <laughs> Scripture also tells us that he who the, whom the Son sets free is it's what? Free indeed. free indeed. But we walk around so much with this self-condemnation, and, and it's just bothering us. Now, it may not be enough for other people to notice, but we notice and we don't get through. because. And then, and then we carry another bag. This bag is called regret. Now, it's really, you could call it the if-only bag. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but my bag of regret is one that has often kept me from moving forward. It's like, there's a phrase, we may be through with the past, but the past is not through with us. Mm -hmm. And that is so true. Our past has a power beyond the past. Sometimes that past lives today in our lives. It's this regret in our lives. It's like, have you ever played freeze tag? When I was a kid, we liked to play freeze tag. We'd run around in our yard, and we would be chased. And if we were touched, we had to freeze right here. And we had to freeze until somebody else came around and touched us again. So we were released. But I will tell you, if you carry self-condemnation, and if you carry guilt, or, or if you carry regret in your life, you're playing freeze tag with your life. And you are frozen. You can't move forward. And I will tell you that the enemy of our soul has tagged us because he's the accuser of the brethren. He walks around behind you and just gives and reminds you of your regret. I can tell you I had a, a, a time of regret even this week. I was telling my wife about it. And uh, we were going for a walk and I was saying, I, I remember a time and and. Of regret and I regret how I stewarded a moment years ago it was a season in my life and I didn't steward that well and I was just talking to her about how it would be different if only if only and if you continue to live your life in the if only's you will never look forward God wants you to live forward he wants you to live with joy in your life. And Satan wants to steal your joy. Two ways that he does that. Self-condemnation and regrets. David was said in that psalm that his sin is always before him. Day and night he's struggling with it. The third bag, the third trash bag, is a little bit heavier. And it had to be stuffed. And it wasn't easy to stuff the bag with. And that's called guilt, mm. an emotional component in our lives. Guilt is hearing over and over and over the judge slam the gavel on the bench and say guilty. We carry guilt in our lives like that. And, and we, in our mind, in our mental state, keeps banging our head and saying, you are guilty, you are guilty, you are guilty. We ought to just say, yes, indeed, and I am forgiven. Amen. I was guilty, you are correct, but the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all unrighteousness. Mm. If you live in self-condemnation, if you live in, in these things and in guilt, you, my friend, will not be able to live the joy of the Lord that he has. Amen. Here's what happens. Here's the effect of carrying these things around. The effect is doubt. Doubt is uncertainty. I... I'm not so sure I can go over here because I remember what I did over here. Mm. I'm not so sure that I can take that job or take that course or, or, or date that girl because I remember what I did over here. It keeps you from moving forward. My friends, it's time to take out the trash. Hallelujah. Doubt and fear 
and missing out of the opportunities that God has for you. Unbelief, unbelief keeps us, keeps us back. We have trouble realizing that the past is just the past. Mm. God has forgiven us. I'm asking you today, what are you holding on to? What are you holding on to in your life? Maybe it's guilt, shame, self-condemnation, fear or doubt or pride, intimidation, insecurity, unforgiveness, anger, hopelessness, lust, selfishness, arrogance, greed, suicidal thoughts, gossip, disobedience, deceit, poor stewardship. All of those things can lock us up. And God wants to set us free. It is time to take out the trash. Amen. You see, what happens is we, we've got a heart problem. It's not a God problem. Mm. It's not a Jesus problem. Jesus, when he died on the cross, said, it is finished. Yeah. And we've got a problem with accepting or receiving the forgiveness of God. Huh. Let me take you to a parable that Jesus said in, in the Luke chapter 15. And you have, we've heard this parable many times. Even unbelievers that know about this parable. It's the parable of the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15 tells us there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. And so he divided up the property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, where they, and there squandered his wealth in his, wild, in his wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out, became a servant, to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, what a powerful phrase, mm. isn't it? When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. Can you hear what the son is thinking in this moment? I'm going to go back to my father. I'm going to, I'm going to ask him to take me back in, but I'm, going to, I'm not going to be a son anymore. I just want to eat at the I just want to eat anywhere. I, I'll come back as a servant. I'll come back as a hired hand. I, I'll come back and I'll, I'll feed the pigs for dad. But he didn't see himself as a son. But while he was still a long way off, and I think this is amazing, while he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and was filled with the compassion for him. While he was a long way off, I can imagine the dad going about his business, but every once in a while, he's checking, mm. checking the streets. When's my son coming back? And we don't know. It's a parable. We don't know how long it was that his son was away. We know it was long enough for him to spend all of his stuff and and try and uh, and, and and get broke and, and go work for work for a farmer somewhere else. We know that much. But the dad's doing his duty. But he's looking out. He's looking. Must be in the evening time. And the, and the dad just sits. I don't know whether he had a porch or not, or a deck or whatever he had. But he's looking out at the street. When's my son coming home? The scripture tells us that when he sees his son, he runs to his son. While he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Confession. True enough. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. All symbols that you now belong. You are back in the family. You are a son. You are not a servant. You are a son. Then he was then justified. He became a son again. The father said, "You quick, bring the best robe. Put it on him with a ring on his finger. He's back in the family. Sand is on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. We're having a meal together. 
Let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, so they began to celebrate. We were lost, and now we are found. Hallelujah. And God doesn't find you, or you don't find God, and then God hold this, hey, you can come into the kingdom, but you're going to sit at the end of the table, or you're going to sit in the kid's seat kid section mm -hmm. or you're going to sit over in the corner and eat or you're going to sit outside and eat that's not where you belong you belong right here right back here at this table amen. and while you're here amen i'm going to put a ring on your finger mm. it's going to show you it's going to be like your marriage ring it's going to remind you every day that you are a child of god you are back in the family yes. but so many times we come to the table and we're picking up all this stuff and we're walking back over to the corner and living over here. And it's keeping us from this beautiful relationship that we have with mm. God. We've got to let it go. We've got to take out the trash. Our father loves us. The parable is really this. Our father loves us as his children. Our father waits for us as, as a father waits for a son to come back home. And our father offers grace and restoration mm -hmm. and forgiveness and redemption of our sins because he has atoned for our sins. The father didn't make him earn his way back. The father didn't say, well, in six months you can come back. I got to see how you do. No, it was full restoration in the kingdom. God's desire for you is to live as a son or daughter, not live in the servants' quarters. A son assumed that he would live, that son assumed that he would live in the shadows and not be seen. God says, no, you're not in the shadows. You're my child. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some other scriptures that seal the deal for you. Acts 13, 38, everyone who believes in him is freed from all guilt and declared right with God. Can you read that one with me? Everyone who believes in him is free from all guilt and declared right with God. I, I don't I, I don't think you're reading it. I don't think you heard it. I don't think you said it. Come on, let's do this. Everyone who believes in him is free from all guilt and declared right with God. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Acts 13. Or Romans 4, 7 says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is what? Forgiven. Forgiven. Whose sins are put out of sight. Thank God. Mm. There is joy that we can have. There is joy that we can have. I was listening to a song today that uh, it was called, I'm uh, Be Blessed, I think. But it was really a kid song, I think. And it was uh, On My Worst Day. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. And on my best day, I'm a child of God. It doesn't matter. I'm still a child of God. On your worst day, you're a child of God. Tomorrow, you're a child of God. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, when you're not feeling good about the week, you're still a child of God. On Friday, when the week is over, you're still a child of God. On Saturday, you're still a child of God. And when you're and on Sunday, you come and you worship with other sons and daughters of God. Children of God. Let me give you a practical step that might help you. There are a few practical steps that we can take. The first one is this. Make repentance and confession a daily practice in your life. Now, here's what I don't mean by that. I don't mean to grovel. I don't mean we come to the Lord and just say, boy, I'm a wicked sinner. I don't mean beating ourselves, uh, you know, with uh, over and over again. I don't mean that. I mean that we come to the Lord with confession and realize who we are, who he is, and thank the Lord. For forgiveness. Confessing daily is a sense of I'm cleaning up daily. I'm taking a shower daily. You know, I am I'm cleaning up the spill right now before it becomes a stain. Mm. You know, if you spill coffee on your carpet, you clean it up right away. And all and all of us at some point in our day have, have fallen short of our expectations of ourselves. We confess that to the Lord. It's an important piece of your discipleship to confess daily before the Lord 
just to come to him and realize who he is. And the Holy Spirit might reveal new things to you that you need to work on. This is a helpful weapon against sin, to confess who you are and confess who God is every day. Scripture says, he who conceals their sin will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So this is repentance, and repentance guards our heart. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word is shub uh, on repentance, which expresses the idea of turning back and retracing one's step in order to return in the right way. And so in repentance, we're turning and we're retracing our steps. And so in our mind, daily, we return and we retrace the steps. So if, if there was a misstep, we know where that misstep is. And, and so that's the idea of repentance. I don't need to go that same, do that same thing again. The second thing is this. Remember your with gratitude. Remember with gratitude, Deuteronomy chapter 6, God speaks, Moses speaks, when the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to your Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you the land with large flourishing cities. You did not build houses filled with all kinds of good things that you did not provide, wells that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery in your blessed state in your living for the Lord in in living as a believer or follower of Jesus do not forget where you came from do not forget that he has saved you he has redeemed you don't forget those things because it reminds us the price that was paid for our salvation. Hallelujah. Lastly, let me say this. Meditate on the word justification. <laughs> it's interesting how these theological words and concepts can change your life. This word justification, we've talked about it again or over and over, uh, is a divine transfer. It is miraculous and it is divine and only God can offer that justification because we move from a state of darkness to a state of light we move from a state of rejection to a state of belonging we move from a state of separation to one of oneness there is a change in the relational environment that's justification today we are justified mm. through Christ amen through Christ. Here's what we want to do. Today, we're going to take out some trash. You were given, when you came, a half sheet of paper on one side. It says, forgiven living. <laughs> therefore, there, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Because through Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Romans chapter 8. If you do not have one of these, I encourage you to get one of these quickly. Grab a pen, because on the back side of it, it says, today I release. And we're going to spend a minute, and we're going to allow the Lord to speak to us and the Holy Spirit to speak mm. to us. And we're going to write down what we need to release before mm. the Lord. Let me read some of those things back to you. Guilt, shame, self-condemnation, fear, doubt, pride, intimidation, insecurity, unforgiveness, anger, mm. hopelessness, lust, selfishness, arrogance. Three, suicidal thoughts, gossip, disobedience, deceit, poor stewardship, but they'll go on and on and on. But we're going to write down what we are going to release today to the Lord. And, and this physical act, it's, it, it's just intentionally thinking about what we need to let go of so that we're not, so that we can be all that God has for us. So let me give you a minute to think about that and begin to write. I would do the same. Come down to the front. Put this in the garbage bag. When you put it in the garbage bag, I want you to release that. And then I want you to pick up the communion elements. Can you have a sense of that? Letting go, letting go of 
my my guilt and my shame. And I'm again I'm trading my sorrows. Mm. Trading my sorrows for forgiveness and redemption and the joy of the Lord. Take the communion elements and then go back to your seat and then we will have a time of doing communion together.